Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Talk about the Japanese painted fern. This particular fern that I've picked up, I went with one that's cheap. I'll explain that in a little bit. Let's just do a real quick rundown on the Japanese painted fern. Japanese painted fern. These are hardy zones four through eight, though that does vary a little bit based on the variety. They generally get anywhere from about a foot to two feet tall, again, <laughs> variety dependent. There's one that supposedly gets a lot bigger to we'll talk about. It's your typical fern in the regard that it likes to be watered regularly with evenly moist, well-draining, organically rich soil. And again, typical fern, shade to part shade maybe part sun depending on where you live and your climate. If it's a very mild climate, then it could maybe take a little bit more sun. Mild mean that temperatures are consistently cool, never like scorching, scorching hot with a decent amount of regular precipitation. And then things like latitude and altitude factor into that also. Now this one that I picked up here, one thing I will note, these are very reflective ferns. It is quite difficult to get their color and beauty to show on camera. I've messed with my settings and whatnot for a while. And this one that I picked up is not the most colorful. Japanese painted ferns are typically absolutely beautiful ferns. There are multiple varieties of them, which I've never seen them in person labeled with their different varieties, but there are some that supposedly have more of a burgundy foliage. Typically though, just your regular Japanese painted fern, that one has more of a silvery purplish foliage to it. There you go. We can kind of see some of that pretty foliage a little bit better there. One of the reasons the Japanese painted ferns are such a wonderful fern to have around in the landscape is that it's a nice plant to have in the shade because of the lighter color foliage. It's almost metallic looking. Again, not as much on the one I picked up here, but typically you'll see that silvery purple foliage on them and that stands out so nicely in the shade. It brightens the area up, it adds a contrast, and they tend to be a fairly low grower. Like I said, 18, 24 inches, somewhere in there. Typically where I live, I don't think I've ever seen these any bigger than a foot. We have very warm summers though, and the precipitation is very unpredictable. Like it'll rain a ton and then not, and be cool and then hot. So and that's not always a fern's cup of tea. A lot of ferns like a lot more consistency in their climate than we have here, here in St. Louis that is. So that's probably one of the reasons that I don't usually see them very big where I live. The thing that's nice about them being a little bit more of a low grower is that these spread fairly well through underground rhizomes, assuming that the soil is loose and loamy, organically rich, you know then they have more room to work with basically if they're planted up with like a hard compact soil probably not going to spread as quickly probably not going to do as well period it's not really a fern that does okay with those types of conditions but if you have an area in your garden that's in the shade light shade this will go up beautifully up in the front of that garden and it pairs up really well with plants like hookahs hookarellas pulmonarias things like that other shady woodland type plants. Those are all plants that have really nice attractive foliage. Can really create a really colorful garden with these ferns. Having them by themselves with just other green plants is still nice because it draws the eye in. But again, there's so many other really pretty plants that pair up well with them. As these ferns mature, those fronds, the pinnae, they... Oh, that was my dog flinching. I don't know what that was about. The pinnae on these ferns will broaden out an awful lot and it'll have a much more full appearance. To it and that's probably one of the reasons that this particular one doesn't have quite as much color to look at on it which partially just because it's pretty small it's also august which isn't like the ideal fern time but the weather has been pretty mild here lately now, i wish i had a really classically beautiful one to show you i just didn't want to get one that's too <laughs> pricey and really big and full and that's partially because these are a fern that i've struggled with before i know what they need to grow it's just my climate isn't always the best thing for them and the areas where I've planted them I probably should have amended the soil better. My native soil is heavy clay and I didn't plant them in heavy clay but the problem with amending an area for something that likes a really loose well draining soil is that you need to do it in a very 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 large area even if it's for a small plant and that's because what can end up happening as you dig out an area to put in like a nice loose soil you can create sort of a bowl in the ground because that clay compacts and then so it's like you have loose soil sitting inside this bowl of clay and so i think that what happens is that in winter time there's a lot of precipitation and the area is freezing too heavily 
So uh, in the future, like when I try this one, I'm going to put it somewhere where the soil drains much more freely, where I don't need to amend it, an area that I've been amending for years. I think it'll do better there. And I mean, we will see. And we'll tell and have to see how it does. So usually when I plant them, they'll do fine during the growing season. It's getting them to come back after a wet winter. It's kind of been my struggle with ferns and my climate is getting them to come back the next year. So they'll do fine during the growing season. They've been planted. It's just getting them through a wet winter. So like I said, really nice, well-draining, organically rich soil. So that's kind of the story behind this fern with my experience. This is a little bit more of a plant chat than a how-to. That's why I gave the basics at the beginning for people who just kind of want a rundown on the fern. But for me, I haven't grown them long enough to give you experience as far as their fertilizing and those things go. But I mean, just like any other fern, I would dilute the fertilizer half strength, apply it monthly during the growing season, and I would probably stop around maybe September 1st for me here in zone six, because I want to give it about six weeks prior to the first frost to kind of calm down and let it slowly go into a dormancy instead of have it growing extremely vigorously. I mean, for a fern and then just have frost come and hit it. The frost is kind of unpredictable here in the fall. You never know when it's going to come. Sometimes it's like November. Typically it's mid-October. You just never know. Just looking in here at this pot, it, you can see these are good spreaders. There's four different plants in here and they're pretty healthy. They're doing fairly well. But ultimately, there's a variety of Japanese painted fern called Godzilla. Never seen it in person. I've only read about it. Some places sell it online, but it supposedly gets like three to four feet tall. And I assume that that is also climate dependent. I've talked about that with other ferns before, like with the ostrich fern talked about a little bit already with this fern that that probably would only be in a climate where the temperatures are mild and uh, cool, never extremely hot, never extremely cold, like the Pacific Northwest, somewhere like that, where I would imagine the ferns would get really big. That's like they do up there. But yeah, that's the backstory to why I wanted to get a cheap one, because I would like to try out that Godzilla variety, but I was also thinking, you know, let me go ahead and see how just a regular one's going to do in that planting area before going to the trouble of having to place a special order, track down something fancy. And it's also not the most ideal time to be planting one of these either. But for the sake of Fern Friday, I was like, you know what, I'm just we're gonna do it, it's fine. And that area it's going to go in is uh, under renovation. So it's still gonna be like a week or two until I can get in the ground. So I am gonna have to be very mindful of protecting it during the winter time. Even though zones four through eight, fully cold hardy here in zone six, like I said, just, if it's really wet, I haven't had great luck getting the ferns to come back. So I want to make sure I do it right, give it a fair shot. And if it does well, then next year I'm going to try that Godzilla variety. And I have seen them grown as a house plant. I personally have never tried that before. I don't know why it would be a problem growing them inside other than they're going to want a lot of humidity, which is typical of most ferns that you put in the house, right? So if it's something you want to try inside, you probably, you know, give it a shot. I don't know. They're going to want conditions pretty moist and bright. Just because it likes shade outside, they still need lots of light in the house. Because in the house, the lighting's not the same as outdoors. But a little bit more about this fern specifically. You can kind of see here on the bottom sides of the pinnae. That's the part of the frond that comes out here. You can sort of see those little tiny bumps. Those are the spores. These are a fern that can be reproduced through division in the springtime. You can cut them in the ground or they're spores. They'll spread on their own that way. I would say the most reliable way to get more of them though would be to divide them up in the springtime and space them out, spread them out a little bit. This isn't the most beautiful Japanese painted fern I've ever seen. Like it's actually very, very far from it. It's the only one I could find. Uh, there were some others that were larger than this they're like three times the cost, but the fronds didn't look any more colorful. So I was like, well, I don't see a reason to do that. Not just for the sake of a video anyways, it wouldn't make any sense. And this one was actually more full than those. Those had fewer fronds and they looked pretty much the same. Like I said, I do wish it had one that was more pretty to show off. If you looked up this video, then chances are you've seen them and you know their potential and how beautiful these ferns can get. They are an extremely popular fern. I've had lots of people ask about these, like why I haven't done one Fern Friday and that this video is pretty much your answer. I haven't had the best of luck with them coming back for me after winter time. So it's hard for me to do a how-to video. I can give you the basics, but as far as everything else is concerned, I can't give you a ton of what my experience has been with them. And that's where the fun things of Fern Friday come in and go ahead and comment down below. 
what have been your experiences with these ferns? Has anybody tried some of the other varieties that are out there? Like the burgundy and whatnot, the Godzilla. But again, comment down below. Easy to grow for you, easy to find for you, different colors you've tried, tips, tricks, suggestions, all of the above. Let's all learn together and get our plant nerd on. When I do get this planted up, I will post updates on my social media. I have that link down below. I use Instagram way more than anything else. It'll likely be in another video on this channel too, probably in a vlog or something like that. I don't know, we will see. And if you haven't already, leave the video a thumbs up. Makes a big difference for the channel and for the videos. I appreciate it and thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out. Yeah, I know it was brief, but it's just kind of a quick laid back fern video. Hope everybody Everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.